What's up everybody out there? Chris at Team Aquascape here. It's a little bit of an overcast, crummy kind of a day, but it is a beautiful day to build a pond here in Oswego, Illinois. Check it out. Even though it's a little drizzly, low 40 degrees, but here is the canvas for the day, which makes it a beautiful day to build a pond. Look at this, clean slate, boom. We got a 19 by 13 foot pond going in here. Waterfalls over there, facing back towards this beautiful house. We got a gorgeous deck, pergola, everything. We got all the bells and whistles on this thing. We got the dosing system, the ion gen. We've got a fish cave in here. It's going to be incredible. Cannot wait to get this party started. I'm hearing some rocks roll around out there. Sounds like the stone might be here. Illinois Brick is on time as usual to uh, save the day so we can get started. Let's go see what the gang's up to, huh? Fast forward, fast forward. mid-morning update so what we got going on is we got the pond halfway dug or so bio falls is already set skimmers already set and chris is on the machine you can see him right there so you can see the shape of the pond's already taken form skimmers in there the waterfall is going to go right there behind matt you can kind of see it right there so that's our bio falls already sunk this is all part of a process right we have 20 steps that basically make this the most efficient way to build ponds that we have found bio falls is the first thing we set that's already in skimmers next then this pond is getting dug, so we take all this soil and we can throw it behind that biofalls to make our berm. The area right there where you can see Micho digging, uh, that's gonna be a fish cave down in the deepest section of the pond. We've got a two foot depth, basically three eight inch shelves. The exception of this right here, we just went straight down. So that's, that's about a uh, 16, 17 inch shelf right there going straight down. So we'll probably put a big rock right in there just to kind of break things up. That piece of slate is gonna go down Right over here, we've already carved it out. The overall shape of it, you can barely see it running right along there. So that's gonna cover up that entire fish cave. Now the next step is to get the underlayment in, and then we'll go liner, and then start rocking. So we're in good shape, sprinkling on us a little bit, which we're used to, but we're having a lot of fun and we're making really great progress. You look like Elliot from ET, except with a beard. Weather conditions have improved slightly. As you can see behind me, you got Nick and Juan working on the waterfalls. Micho and Matt are gonna start on edges over there and kind of work their way that way. The whole pond itself is rocked in. We're gonna start rinsing uh, and getting this thing filled pronto while they're doing that. And uh, then we're gonna start working on retaining walls. The waterfall, I'm gonna show you the construction that is a little bit different than what we normally do. You guys are making great progress. Things are looking good. The pond looks freaking cool. I love the edge treatments that they have around here. You got some big rocks. So the pond is filling. You can see it's almost kind of a circular shape all the way around here, but then it kind of bottlenecks. It'll go back around that way. It's just a really kind of cool shape. Nick and Juan did an excellent job on the waterfalls right there. And then there's a tiny one way back up in there. Notice how the top waterfall here, which is what this stone is, this is a spill stone, sandwiched between a, a big frame rock and another frame rock. But notice how, how far away from the bio falls this spill stone is. So this is going to have this almost spring fed illusion coming out of it. So the height of this rock right here, as you can see by the camera, is the same height as the bio fall lip right there we'll get a couple of rocks probably something coming down like this so that when the water comes out of the bio falls it kind of twists around that rock comes down over this this spill rock is kind of at a 45 so it's going to fall this way and then we'll get it to twist and turn around where i am at we'll get another rock probably cut back into there and then we'll get another triangle rock coming down in here so when it falls it goes around that rock twists back to your left and then comes over this this big waterfall rock right here. We'll block this side up, this little triangle, just with a chunk, so that we get all that water to come off the left side of this rock. 
it should look really, really nice. And then there's some really, really neat lighting in here. You can see there's a three watt right there, uh, lighting up this waterfalls. We've got another one tucked back in there, illuminating this pool area. There's about eight inches of water where I'm standing, as well as all the way around on that top shelf. That's about a six inch deep area. We put that in for some of the shallower aquatics. There's also some neat little pockets kind of stuffed back in between that rock, back over behind that cobble right there that's in front of the hose. And some places in through here, you can see this gravelly area. It's a good place to put in some of those marginals or those edge water plants. Again, remember, plants, regardless of whether they're aquatic um, or terrestrial plants, meaning on the outside or in the existing landscape, are crucial to tie the water feature back together into the existing landscape. The white gelia is kind of a little hedgerow just to frame out the deck and patio there. Nice little backdrop. Eventually, there will be a patio where I'm standing that you'll be able to get to from this walkway as it'll spin around here and kind of weave its way in between these trees and then there will be kind of a circular patio where I'm standing actually on this side of the pond as well. That's why we did a lot of these kind of flat stones along this edge so that the patio can seamlessly butt right up to the edge of the pond there and it'll be a nice transition from the hardscape surface to the pond. Retaining wall is done on this side. Remember folks, we don't like to do the ring of pearls look. We like to leave all these little pockets in between boulders to, so that we can get plants so it'll naturalize. We don't want a sea of rock all the way around. So very organic S curve kind of shape. A lot of you guys are probably wondering what we do with the spoils when we excavate for our ponds. I would say three quarters of the time the dirt stays on site. Today, all the dirt stayed on site, which is nice. So what we did was to get creative is we brought all that dirt and all the spoils from the excavation of the pond over there, stuck it back behind the biofalls and made this long berm coming out this way. This berm looks enormous back here. It's Again, it's not graded out, but it's only about 18 inches from the height of the biofall sits down to existing grade over here along the fence. This is about a eight foot span from the back of the biofalls to the fence. We're gonna grade everything out nice and flat for about the first four feet to the back side of the biofalls. And then we're slowly gonna and gently going to taper that down. We'll probably put in a handful of rocks along the back just to help stabilize that burn, but also just to break it up as well. So we'll get a lot of this dirt off of the fence over here. We don't want that to happen. And the excess dirt will continue to come back. It's getting kind of late in the day. What we're gonna do is actually split up tomorrow. So you'll finish out the video with Nick and Juan. This is a $13,000 and some change project. We basically got it done in one day with, with a six man team. So logistics, logistics and good planning equals efficiency and more money. We are just buttoning up stuff at this Oswego job. It's day two. Today is just gonna be finishing up little things, finishing up the waterfall and a lot of cleanup. So as you can see, this pond is filling right now. That waterfall you can see up there. We're very close to being done. We have a few more rocks to add up there. We have to foam and then get our lights all wired up, which Juan is doing right now. We have this whole retaining wall done here. We'll probably add a few more stones over here. Pop a tree up in the top there. Our auto dose is all hooked up. We gotta hook up our ion gen in here, get our pump in. And then after that, we're just gonna clean all this up, cut new bed lines in here. Yeah, we should be definitely out of here today. Booty's doing some final dirt work with the dingo. I just wanna point something out real quick. We put a few key rocks in here to hopefully get that water to move, 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 move. So. Because it's such a straight run, we want to create more movement, not to have that stair step effect. What we did is we put boulders that kind of come out into the stream here, up top there, right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to push that water that way, come back around and it'll fall over here. And then it'll force that water to come around this way as well, dropping over the waterfall into the pond. We always leave a couple edges exposed, right here, right over here just so we can check and make sure there's no water that's gonna be pushing where we want, don't want it to be. So we'll get this thing fired up, see how everything looks, check all our edges, then we'll finish off that biofalls. It's gonna finish doing some of the dirt work.
So you can see these two rocks that I was talking about earlier that we put in right here and right here. You can just kind of see the way that pushes that water just enough. Same right here, it kind of comes down, rushes around that over this waterfall. It looks awesome, it sounds even better. So you can see right here, we kind of went for the stream fed look, which basically means we didn't build that waterfall right off of the biofalls, but instead we pushed it out, made all this soil underneath here, and then put this first real waterfall out about three feet from the actual biofalls itself. That does two things. One, it changes up the look a little bit, takes our eye away from that biofalls, and two, we were able to lose a bunch of soil that we excavated from the pond behind here, behind here. The other thing that we do is we make our berm for every single job, right? So this job, because we had so much extra soil, making some retaining walls, like Chris was saying, and then uh, we made this retaining wall here as well, kind of go around this nice birch tree. We have this whole pond lit up here. It's gonna look awesome at night. You can see the outline of this fish cave right here. That's gonna be a huge place for fish to go. Automatic dosing system, this thing is kick butt. Basically what this does is it takes care of all of your water treatments. It's in there is all your beneficial bacteria. There's a small amount of detox. There's enzymes to help break down organic matter in the pond. That's just an all in one kind of water treatment. This thing will be crystal clear by tomorrow. So the ponds right here, as you can see, we just cut a new bed line around here to give this nice look. We blew out all the grass as best as we possibly can. We graded out that berm, that all looks really nice. So that's it for Oswego, Illinois. Juan and I are heading out to finish up another job right now. If you guys enjoyed the way it turned out, please like, comment, subscribe to stay updated on all our latest videos. I'll catch you next time. See ya.